Okay, so uh, back to the lesson. And before I move on to explaining the checks and balances, I'm just going to hit back on to this question right here. So what are the main pros and cons of the system? I'll talk to the pros first. One, as I mentioned earlier, it limits tyranny uh, or the rise of a potential dictator. Because again, it's that idea that uh, I'm building in to this system, this concept, this idea that you can't just do something unilaterally. You can't make decisions uh, on a whim and then put them into play just because you choose to do so. Uh, again, there needs to be that interaction with the other branches to ensure that the actions that you're actually taking uh, are meaningful and should be beneficial to our system. So that leads into the second pro. There's a need for deliberation, and you especially see this in the Senate, which was specifically made to deliberate. But it's just, again, that idea that uh, if we're going to pass sweeping changes or uh, put in any type of really meaningful legislation, that the different stakeholders get a chance to take a look at this. So there has to be communication, for instance, within the legislative branch between the, the Senate and the House, let alone within the Senate and the House. Then that also continues to the relationship between the legislative branch and the executive branch where there has to be communication between those two, that they're agreeing on the same bill, for instance, and they're on the same page to get that passed. So in a system like ours, where we have a country that is so big, uh, what that leads to is the third pro, which is it can force compromise. So let's say, for instance, you had the legislative branch that was controlled by the Democrats, but you had a Republican president. The Democrats couldn't just push forth legislation that they want unless they either A, have a two-thirds supermajority to override a president's veto, or B, uh, if they were to work with the president and negotiate and deliberate and communicate and ultimately compromise. So hopefully there is a piece of legislation or whatever decision that's made uh, where the majority of the country is on the same page. But there are several cons. Uh, one, this can lead to gridlock and polarization. You can more or less take everything that we've talked about in unit one and apply that right here. Uh, same concept, if you have a Democratic legislative branch and a Republican executive, uh, that can lead to gridlock because if they're not compromising, if we are polarized and we really don't like one another, uh, you're not going to see uh, a lot of communication between both sides. And uh, that's something that we'll look into a little bit deeper later in the week or two when we look at the legislative process. And what's really been going on, again, we're trying to push out this aid to American families. Second con, which also can be a pro, uh, it can lead to large sweeping decisions. So for instance, I'll go back to the example I use a lot, which is on uh, the Supreme Court decision in 2015, Obergefell v. Hodges to say that uh, marriage is now defined as two people, not a man and a woman. So for liberals throughout the country, uh, progressives, this was huge, this was a great win. Uh, but to many conservatives throughout the country, they looked at this large sweeping decision made by the judicial branch, uh, and they were unhappy about this. And they looked at the legislative branch now, who really the only thing they could do about this uh, decision is to pass a constitutional amendment. And with the direction the country's going in, it's just not going to happen. And that's something that has upset conservatives. And then finally, and this one ties into it, the previous one, uh, powers can be used for political purposes. So a president could choose to veto a bill uh, and totally kill a bill that people have been working on for an extended period of time just because he doesn't like it, because it's good for him politically, for instance. Or you could get a Supreme Court that is more liberal or more conservative in their ideology. And people are going to argue that they're making decisions based on that for political reasons, not for compromise and deliberation, but for themselves. So that certainly can be a con, which can lead to more gridlock and polarization. So on to the final uh, major activity here. What I want you to do is two cahoots. Uh, and what I'm looking for you to, to do is to be able to answer this question basically is, how does the system of checks and balances work? So two different cahoots here, uh, two different challenges. So take your time with these. Uh, if you can play with play these with friends or at least another person, that'd be great to get a little competition discussion involved in all this. 
But uh, the first one is going to force you to kind of work with the information. Like you're going to get questions like the ability of Congress to override a veto is a check on which branch. And you have to consider, OK, so if they're vetoing a bill, who is Congress pushing back on? It's that sort of idea. You'll get 10 questions for this one. Then for the second Kahoot challenge, uh, you're going to get a checks and balances scenarios. So the first question says the president vetoed a law that will give homes to homeless veterans and not cost any money. So in that scenario, who is the president checking? That's what you want to look for for each one of these. So as you can see for expectations, use your notes, the information on slide number eight, uh, and the reading to complete the cahoots. Now this is for practice, just to kind of get a sense of how the system works. Uh, if we were in class, I'd be talking it through with you a little bit more. Uh, but I'm going to give you a grade for completing this. So probably about five points each, something like that. It's going to go into your reading category, uh, reading quiz category. Uh, so just give these a shot. Uh, think about how the system works. And when you're finished, uh, just go to the exit ticket. Let me know how you felt about these topics. And then definitely make sure to leave me questions if there's anything about this system that ended up confusing you at all. So that's it for today. Uh, I'll post a new lesson tomorrow on federalism. So hope you guys have a great day. Take care.